The fortified settlement of Zembrzal is located around 1.8 miles away from Dorsch Vedr, built on top of a mount overlooking the fertile valley of the Sisandru River and approximately 6 miles away from the sea. Its construction dates back to the beginning of the 3rd millennium BC, with its occupation spanning throughout the Chalcolithic, also known as Copper Age, from 2900 BC until 1700 BC. It's part of a group of fortifications from the same era, located in the current regions of Lisboa and Stubal, including the fortified settlements of Lusaya in Oeiras, Vila Nova de São Pedro in Azabuja and Chibanos in Palmela. The fortified settlement of Zambujal was discovered in 1932 by Lunel Trindade, an archaeology enthusiast from Torres Vedras that, since the late 1920s, scoured the region searching for historical vestiges. He conducted the first survey and excavation in 1944, whose results confirmed the importance of that archaeological site and led to its classification as a national monument in 1946. Between 1959 and 1961, excavations were carried out under the direction of Aurelio Ricardo Bello, director of the Torres Vedras Municipal Museum and by Lionel Trindade, his assistant. In 1961, the German archaeologist Vera Leisner visited the site with Hermann Fried Schubert of the German Archaeological Institute of Madrid. The survey they conducted impressed for its stratigraphic potential. Lunel Trindad then invited Schubert to continue the excavations, which were joined by Edvard Zangmeister, who had previous experience with the Calcolithic settlements of Villanova de San Pedro and Los Millares in Spain. In six excavation seasons carried out between 1964 and 1973, thousands of archaeological objects and vestiges were collected and radiocarbon dated, allowing the identification of five distinct construction phases. The first phase, that goes back to the early 3rd millennium BC, featured a layout centered on a fortification surrounded by massive towers and radio walls with small entrances. The second phase corresponds to the construction of the Barbican in the central fortification, as well as hollow towers and entrances to the second line of walls. In the third phase, the Barbican space was reconfigured and the entrances built in the preceding stage were closed. The fourth phase is characterized by the construction of hollow towers in the three lines of walls. The fifth and final phase corresponds to a restriction of the occupation to the central nucleus with reinforcement of the Barbican area. The remaining areas suffered collapses possibly due to their abandonment. Excavations carried out in 1995, already under the direction of Michael Kunst, allowed the detection of a total of four lines of walls with increasingly larger diameters following the growth of the settlement. During the 17th century, part of the western section of the fortification was demolished with its materials being reused in the construction of a farmhouse, whose ruins we can still see today. The fortified settlement has an interior enclosure measuring around 160 feet in diameter, reinforced with circular and semicircular bastions, measuring between 16 and 32 feet thick. Its construction appears to have been planned from the beginning, at least in the first of its phases, as revealed by the complexity of this architectural project. This fact, in conjunction with the apparition of new and more developed constructive forms, such as corbel arches, hewn stone slabs and double-sided walls, suggest the presence of specialized builders. The choice of this location may be linked to the existence of a natural port at the confluence between the Pedrudus Creek and the Sisendru River, which allowed navigable access to the sea. 
On the south and west side, there's an escarpment that allowed natural defense. On the north side, and mainly on the east, there's a slight slope that constituted the most exposed part of the fortification. The successive lines of walls, made up of circular towers and connected by walls, are therefore facing this slope in order to guarantee the defense of the settlement. The five great constructive campaigns, which span more than a millennium, reveal complex changes in the defensive strategy that resulted in the construction of new walls and the tearing down or alteration of the previous ones. What was then the origin of the builders of the fortified settlement of Zambujal and of the similar structures that emerged during the Calcolithic in this region of the current Portuguese territory? Being intensely fortified settlements, who were they defending themselves against? These are questions for which we do not have definitive answers and which have divided archaeologists. Some investigators, namely Zangmeister and Schubart at an early stage, considered that Zambujal had been built by copper prospectors from the Near East. These would, therefore, be populations at a more advanced civilizational stage than that of the indigenous inhabitants, having built and maintained this fortification to defend themselves against the latter. However, to date no relevant findings have been made to confirm this possibility, either due to the lack of significant correlation between these settlements and the extraction of copper, or the absence of objects of external origin. This gives rise to a solid hypothesis that we are dealing with the work of indigenous populations who emerged from the growing complexity of societies at the end of the Neolithic. In addition to these changes, resulting from the sedentarization and the subsequent specialization of work, there is the influence exerted by possible commercial contacts with populations from the Eastern Mediterranean. Furthermore, if the defensive nature of these structures is evident on a first level, we may also be facing a construction that has an aspect of asserting power and territorial dominance. In a territory where different human groups compete for its possession, a building like the fortified settlement of Zambujal would represent a military advantage and, no less important, a symbol of supremacy. The archaeological excavations carried out here over eight decades allowed the collection of various traces of its material culture with special emphasis on ceramic elements. Among these, the so-called fluted cups stand out, dating back to the initial phase of the settlement and which have good quality with thin walls and a polished black or brownish surface. In the following stage, coexisting with the first until the disappearance of both, appeared ceramics with decoration in carved leaves arranged in the shape of a cross or in acacia leaves. The third type of pottery to emerge is the so-called bell beaker in maritime style, which appeared here from 2200 BC and remained in production and use until the settlement was abandoned. Its use seems to be linked with metallurgical processes, namely the spaces where the metal was transformed. Its production was made with local clays being modeled with rollers. In terms of lithic materials, several flint pieces were found, namely arrowheads, as well as necklace beads made from green stones, and there are also ornaments in bone and even African ivory. Regarding metallurgical remains, more than 900 copper elements were found in the fortified settlement of Zambujal, most of them irregular or with very simple shapes. 
Standing out among these finds is a set of 80 objects that include awls and small chisels, but also saw blades, axes, arrowheads, knives and a dagger. This was a metallurgical production center, a fact confirmed by objects such as crucible fragments, copper remains and metallic slag. The copper came from sources more than 60 miles away. In total, 16 phases of occupation of the fortified settlement of Zembujal were identified, framed by the already mentioned five construction phases, which represented the same number of defensive strategies. The first phase is characterized by the construction of the first line of walls, formed by two massive towers connected by a double wall. The settlement was constituted as a central fortified area surrounded by courtyards, with these being connected in such a way that it was necessary to pass through each of them to access the interior of the town. Phase 2 represents a change in defensive strategy, with the previous massive towers being joined together through a barbican, which is still well preserved today, and on which wall a set of eight slits was opened. The system of radial courtyards is changed, and the second and third lines of walls are built. The second line has several doors that were watched and protected by the arrow slits in the barbican. Thus, the settlement would now be defended from external attacks by channeling enemies through a set of small doors that directed them to the archer's line of fire. In phase 3, the Barbican system is changed, perhaps because it was not effective. The space between the walls was filled and elevated platforms were created that would be accompanied by wooden structures to protect the archers. These changes favoured troop movement, offering an elevated position over attackers. At this time, several circular houses were also built between wall lines 1 and 2. Among these houses, one that became known as House 5 stands out, where clear evidence of its use in metallurgical tasks related to copper was found. In phase 4, hollow towers were added to the platforms built in the previous phase. The best known is the so-called B-tower, which rose on a false dome and was topped by a wooden or straw roof. The last phase of occupation of the fortified settlement of Zembujal is the fifth, in which large corridors were created on the second line of walls, flanked by a set of semicircular bastions. Line 1 began to present a new front through the union of towers A and B with a dense wall that, in some points, was up to 50 feet thick. In the so-called L-Gate, located in the second line of walls, unburied human remains were found, which together with the various collapses and the rapid reduction of the inhabited area, led to the hypothesis of a catastrophic end for this town, whether due to human action following a battle, or for natural reasons, such as a strong earthquake. The houses found so far, located within the walled area, have a circular shape and sometimes the floor is covered with stone slabs. However, some surveys carried out outside the fortified area revealed considerable remains of ceramics, suggesting the possibility of housing in a wider area. The size and monumentality that Zambujal possessed during the centuries of its occupation indicates its great regional importance and the social complexity of the populations it housed. What then would be the source of its wealth and power? 
The agricultural potential of this place was not particularly high, meaning it was never a cereal producing centre. Also, no traces of large-scale livestock farming were ever found. Nevertheless, Zambujal's position in relation to the sea placed it at the confluence of several commercial routes, a fact confirmed by the discovery of imported materials such as copper, which came from Alentejo and was brought in small prills. Objects made of verisite, a green mineral originating in present-day Spain, shells from the Indian Ocean and African ivory were also discovered, reinforcing the idea that this place was an important centre of trade. Many of these objects can be seen at the Lionel Trindade Municipal Museum, located in the former convent of Nossa Senhora da Graça in the centre of Torres Vedras. Here we can find archaeological pieces found in several places in the region and which are part of the permanent exhibition Stories of Zambujal, 50 years of the German Archaeological Institute in Torres Vedras. In 2018, Torres Vedras City Council carried out works to enhance the fortified settlement of Zambujal and the surrounding area, involving the restoration of structures and the improvement of access and circulation conditions. To enrich the visit, an app was also created for smartphones with an audio guide which provides historical information about the place following the visitor's route. Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you liked the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.